My name is Hela Gandur, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. Let's see if we can learn something from Peter, and let me try to show some clarity of vision uh, and some purpose for the next 15 minutes. What I hope to do is really walk you through some of the plans we have to build what we hope will be an exceptional, maybe even a unique mega event. I'd also like to talk to you about the many ways in which SMEs and businesses like yours can get involved in this project. Everything from helping us with infrastructure development and service delivery, to really using the Expo as a window for your innovations and your products. I'd also like to talk about what happens after 2021. What happens after we close the gates? As you'll see, we have some incredible plans for what happens to the site and to everything that we develop. And again, there's so many opportunities for each of you to get involved in that. But before I get ahead of myself, let me focus on three things. What is this expo all about? What is it aimed to do? And how will it be built? As many of you may have read already, it's our ambition to make Expo 2020 one of the most universally attended events ever. We have around 25 million people coming to this mega event over the six months period, and 70% of them will come from beyond this nation's borders. This doesn't, of course, include the millions more who will have an opportunity to experience this expo through all of our digital platforms. More than that, we also hope to make this the most inclusive expo ever. We're expecting around 180 countries to participate, which is really tremendous and something that hasn't happened before. Every expo really starts with a thought, a thought that is really reflected in a theme. And this has been true ever since the first World Expos of 1851. For the last 170 years, you can really see the development of the Expo movement over the ages, over the eras, really tracking both the political and the social history of the world. In the ages before mass transport and before mass media, it was these Expos that were really the opportunity for people to get a better understanding of science and technology, of the artistic global movements, of geographic and geopolitical perspectives through their themes, their designs, their architecture, and their content, these expos really provided a sense of hope, a sense of wonder. They brought people a little closer together. What you see on the screens behind me is really the lists of firsts, the first x-rays, the first video telephone, the first tomato ketchup, and it really showed the world everything from space exploration to the sustainability movement. These were all the first that were shown for the first time at a World Expo. And now, as 2020 approaches, it becomes really our turn to create something exceptional with your help, to create our own profound legacy. And of course, that legacy does really start with an Expo theme. In today's globalized world, where none of us are immune to what happens around the rest of the world, we need to recognize that we need to work together to address both global challenges, but also to seize common opportunities. And all of these truths are reflected on our theme for 2020, connecting minds, creating the future. We believe that that future is really defined by three fundamental things. How easy is it to access opportunities for success and fulfillment? How can we freely move and connect? And how do we balance the needs of today with the musts of tomorrow? You see it in the images behind me. But what you see is a real physical manifestation of the Expo 2020 themes. Three petals, each petal dedicated to one of the sub-themes, and all of them coming together at the center, an area we call al-wasl, or the connecting point, really symbolizing the coming together of people, the coming together of minds. Each of these districts is supported by street architecture, unique experiences, and programs that deliver the core messages of the themes. 
And each of these districts will have one of these landmark pavilions that again symbolize the sub-theme in architecture, content, and identity. Expo 2020 is being placed on a 438-hectare site south of the city. Here, we're effectively building a mid-sized town. It's connected to three international airports and to Dubai's center city by a dedicated network of buses, car lanes, and a metro station. So entry, exit, will be swift and simple to the site. Once you come inside the gates, the whole park has been carefully constructed to ensure a comfortable visitor experience. Here we have ongoing circulation and thousands of events and concerts and parades happening a day. So in brief, just to recap what I've already talked about, we have a relevant, optimistic, and exciting theme. We have a physical space that manifests the sub-themes. And we have around 200 pavilions, each one that showcase the best and the latest technology and thinking. I hope you can see by what I've just mentioned that there are endless opportunities for you to get involved in everything from imagining what this looks like to helping us deliver it. But all of that is really in four years' time. What about right now? What about today's immediate involvement? How should Expo 2020 really reach out to the community and engage locally and globally? While well, we spend a significant amount of time as Expo working with youth and cultural entities, today I would like to focus on the business community, who have really been center to all of our planning and our delivery ever since we started bidding for this effort. Over the last two years, we've undergone a pretty intensive engagement program. We've met with business councils, enterprises, promotion bodies, and business leaders from all over the world. We've told them about our plans, but more importantly, we've listened to them, and we've heard about their thoughts and their hopes. And really, it is through these encounters that we've been able to dream about what is possible for this expo and how we effectively deliver it. One of the most important things that we did through this effort is we introduced the procurement portal. This is an online system that really forms the gateway to all of the projects that go to market from Expo 2020. This is incredibly important for your engagement, so I'd like to spend a few minutes now to tell you about it. This is a dedicated supplier registration portal that has already welcomed around 10,000 businesses and through which we've awarded around 950 orders worth 2 billion dirhams. I want to emphasize that that number that I've just described is only the value of projects that have gone to SMEs. And to be honest, that's really just the beginning. One of the key measures that we check on is inclusivity. We're not just measuring what and how we spend, but we are measuring on who we spend it with. We're serious about diversifying our spend across all tiers, and that's precisely why we've committed 20% of both our direct and our indirect budget and spend to SMEs like the ones here in this room. Just to be clear, that amounts to over 5 billion dirhams that we are dedicated to businesses such as the ones around this room. We've also rolled out our SME policy. And this SME policy has engagement terms, favorable payment terms, and easier conditions to make it possible for businesses to get involved. Let me give you a couple of examples. We've reduced the validity of offers from 120 days to 60 days. We've eliminated the need for bonds. And we provided advanced payments of up to 50% of contract value all of which to ensure that SMEs have a competitive advantage and a real ability to get involved in this project in a meaningful way. Let's turn to the e-sourcing portal itself. What you see on the screen here, or you will in a minute, is really the landing page. This is the first point of contact for all suppliers. Any company 
from any country can register on this portal. And to date, we already have registration from 113 countries. I urge you to reference this portal because this is where all of the opportunities and all of the tenders that go to market are placed. It'll also give you an ongoing sense of the volume of business that's being launched. Typically, right now, we're launching anywhere from 30 to 35 tenders a month. By 2018, that's going to be closer to 150 a month. So definitely go on, look at what's being offered, and please get involved. Now I'd like to switch to really what happens after 2020, the legacy of this mega event. In the end, world expos are defined by what they leave behind. In some cases, that's big landmark buildings, the Eiffel Tower, the Space Needle, but they're also defined by the ideas, the innovations, the collaborations, the partnerships. World fairs have really changed cities like Chicago, Barcelona, Seattle, and Shanghai. So legacy really is the whole point of the event. It is about creating inspiration. It is about connecting the past, the present, and the future. And it really is about connecting minds. So how should I pull this all together? Expo offers you access to new markets and new opportunities. It can help you drive value by gaining scale, by accelerating growth, and by talking to the more than 3 billion inhabitants of our fast-growing Miasa region. And that's not only during the event, because post-event, 80% of everything that we build, that includes our infrastructure, our technology, our systems, our transportation efforts, all of that will be retained and will create an ecosystem that lives on way past this project and way past the gates are closed. So the theme districts that host the majority of nations and corporations will be transformed into collaborative workspaces that house both large corporations and small corporations after the event. The iconic theme pavilions will also stay behind. For example, the Mobility Pavilion will turn into a world-class logistics institute. The Sustainability Pavilion will become a children's and a science exploratorium. All of these really not only capturing the magic of the expo, but continuing to drive innovation, continuing to bring people together, and continuing to really be that center of tomorrow. So, Legacy really is an ongoing effort that starts today and one that grows both extraordinarily and exponentially over time. Our hope is that you see that our legacy is not ours alone, but a legacy that we can all build together. As nations participate in Expo 2020, the impact of this legacy broadens. It reaches more people in more places and it grows as those people and those places grow with it. So what are we going to leave behind after Expo 2020? That really is up to us. And I hope that in the coming years, we can all work together to create something truly exceptional and something that leaves a meaningful and tangible living footprint for all of us to enjoy. Thank you very much for your attention.